Hi everyone, this is Tyler here with Woodland Frenchies and today's video is super informative. So if you came to this video looking to understand how to fly with a puppy or a dog on an airline, you need to stay tuned and watch this video because I've been doing that a lot lately going to a lot of uh, French Bulldog shows. But even if you don't have a French Bulldog, I feel I can help you um, understand how to fly with a puppy or a dog, no matter what breed, what age, what size, I'll be able to help you in today's video. So stick around for that, guys. We're here with some of our French Bulldogs here at Woodland Frenchies, and uh, I wanna help you guys with that question today. But before we get started, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, and just stay tuned with our content. We do this, do about three to four videos a week, and just love our pups, especially Frenchtons and Frenchtons. So yeah, guys, just real little recap. I guess let's just post some of these photos that on our kind of my previous trips that I've had you'll see here probably some uh, puppies in maybe a carrying case uh, maybe at the airport um, kind of some of the photos that I capture going along on these trips just kind of to show you I have experience taking dogs on flights so that you know what I'm saying is true and can kind of understand um, you know the whole process so hopefully those are showing right now and uh, I guess where to start off with, I guess number one is choosing the right airline. That's kind of the biggest first step, in my opinion, when determining how to take a puppy uh, or an adult on a flight. Choosing the right airline. Um, some are gonna be more stricter, some are gonna be uh, more lenient, especially on the weight. So Frontier and Spirit, they have a 20 pound, or they have a 40 pound weight limit on their dogs. So if you have an older dog and it is over 20 pounds, I would definitely recommend going with either Frontier or Spirit on the flight, choosing them as your um, airline. United, uh, American Airlines, Southwest, they have a 20 pound limit. So that dog or puppy, unless it's a service animal, I'll just get that off. If you have a service animal, you can get through it as long as you have the right paperwork and maybe that's a separate video too. Um, but if you don't have a service animal, it needs to be 20 pounds and under for American Airlines Southwest, all the more higher end expensive airlines Southwest, you know, all that good stuff. But then Spirit and Frontier, it needs to be 40 pounds or less. So a little more lenient on the weight. Now let's get that picture back up here on the carrying case. That is the most important thing to have for, South, for any of these airlines, that carrying case. Maybe I can include the link. They're only around 40 bucks. But a lot of people have asked where I've gotten these carriers, um, just from even posting on Instagram and all that good stuff. You know, I've had messages, where'd you get this carrier? Like, um, because it works really, really well. And uh, maybe we can do a video on how to use that thing and, and so forth. But the one end opens up all the way you can put the dog in, and then the other end opens up just a little bit so that the head sticks out. And you can see that in the pictures, obviously. But that's about, this carrier is about as big as you can carry in any, airline so highly recommend this bag here and the thing is so Frenchies what we have they weigh a lot more than what they look so they might look like they maybe only weigh 15 pounds but they might end up weighing like 25 pounds so they're gonna fit a lot more compactor in a carrying case like this now I have a flight nanny that says she's took in a 40 pound adult boxer and fit them into a carrying case like this just to get them into you know spirit or frontier so again if you can fit your dog into this carrying case and it's under 40 pounds you can get them through frontier and spirit now when you board not always we've one way the when you when you're actually going into the loading onto the airplane the, you know the, the heads were allowed, allowed out but legally the heads need to be in that carrying case when you board that plane you can take take them out of the carrying case once you're on the plane all that good stuff but um, they have to fit into that bag <laughs> so that's definitely one thing to test out before you go um, one other thing to know normally if you don't have surf animal it's gonna be around $125 extra to take a puppy on a flight and that puppy is just gonna sit down below your feet area. You're also, for Frontier and Spirit, you're allowed to have your personal bag, which is just a backpack. You know, I first put the backpack under the front seat, then I set the puppy down, and your leg is a little tight. 
but I mean it beats having to pay for an extra seat and all that good stuff. Um, I have flown with American Airlines before, but mostly I'll, I'll tend to try to do Spirit and Frontier. So just kind of if you're wondering what is the process, how do I book a flight? How do I include the puppy? So basically when you want to go ahead and book your flight, this is how I would go ahead and start the process. I would go online and you know, go through your standard way of you know getting your tickets for your airline, whether it's through you know internet or however you do that, um, whatever app, whatever you use. Uh, for me, I tend to do Spirit or Frontier. Get my tickets, whether it's you know definitely try to get flights that are non-stop at, at all possible. Not so many layovers. I I hate layovers, so I try to find ones that aren't don't have layovers. Book my tickets, all that good stuff. Then what I would do. Once I have those tickets booked, I, there's a number for any flight, you know, whether it's Frontier, Spirit, whatever. I call them right away and I tell them I have a puppy I would like to take with me. They'll ask if it's a service animal or just a pet. I tell them a pet, and then they're going to go ahead and process. You know, okay, well, they'll, you know, so down one way normally it's around $125, back the other way another $125. So that could be up to $250 extra to bring a puppy. Uh, along with you on your flight or an adult dog. Mm -hmm. If you're the service animal, it's for free. If you guys have a service animal, but uh, normally it's around an extra $125 to bring a puppy or a dog uh, along with you. So call in, you know, they'll send you, you know, they'll ask you to run your card. They'll add that to your um, itinerary for your flight. You should be able to check on the app. Oh, it should say on there that it says, you know, an additional puppy. You know, you can even add in your baggage, and that's who I'll go to. When I call in, they'll direct, I always go direct you to the baggage people, and I take care of, you know, maybe adding an extra bag or whatever, and then you can even do that extra thing if you want to add on that type of thing, if you need to add a suitcase or whatever on. So that's super important to call ahead, make sure you add on that puppy via the phone. People are pretty good to talk to with the flights and uh, get that taken care of. So once you get that done, what's gonna happen is there's normally, depending on the flight you go with, there might be you know, four to 10 seats that a puppy is allowed to go on because they wanna make sure to give you a little bit extra room because they know that you're gonna have uh, extra carry-on to set in front of you. So there's specific seats they have for those, those people who bring puppies on board. And it tends to be more in the front, right, up, right behind first class. So hopefully those seats are available for you. When you're booking that with the person, maybe bring that up. Is there seats available um, for my puppy? And you know, the better seats. So that would help. You cannot sit in an emergency seat with a puppy. That's something you need to know. Because um, they tend to have more room, but you can't sit with them in those types of seats. So once you have those tickets booked, uh, you have the carry-on ready to roll. You know your puppy fits in that carry-on. You know, you. That morning, maybe if they get up at 3 a.m., flight leaves at 6 a.m., you know, show up a good two hours earlier. Now, for me specifically, since I do a lot of travel, I have clear, which is allows you to go to the front of the line. This is a lengthy video, guys, but I'm just really sharing in detail how to travel with a the puppy. There might be something that comes up along your trip that, oh yeah, he did say this, this might help. So this is just an instance, okay? So you go to your, you know, you, you go to the airline, Try to show up normally two hours before, and you know you, there's a separate line normally. You don't go through the baggage and luggage, you know, the normal one. There should be a separate line that you go into for special luggage or carry-ons or whatever, which is what these puppies are. So you should be able to get to the front of the line, you know, get your tickets, uh, boarding pass, and uh, you know check in any bags just like normal. Then now the now the part begins. You got to get through security, right? I gotta potentially wait in this huge line for security, right? And what can happen? You do not wanna necessarily get stuck in a big line with a puppy, that's not fun. Two ways you can get around that. First way is it's a chance. I guess there's three ways. First way is obviously if there's a short line. That's obviously, you know, go in right away short line. Second way, if they have dogs, if they have search dogs, going through security, checking bags, you are automatically, without paying an extra fee, gonna go to the front of the line and get through, go through security right away because 
they do not want animals to distract them, get different scents for the, the search dogs. That can distract them. So they right away, they move you as quick as possible past everybody. We just did it on a trip going to Cleveland. There was, I don't, we would have had to wait for hours through this line. Luckily, not luckily, we would have another way to get through quicker, but you know, if you could be lucky. They, we got pushed to the front of the line and gotten through, which was really amazing. And they're quick and efficient about it. It's kind of impressive. And then third way, which I recommend, is using clear or there's TSA. So that just allows you to, to get through the line and go through security right away and uh, do it that way. So clear and TSA, you can look those up. You can, uh, you would sign up for those at the airport. I do clear. I think they're more professional and just do a really good job. And you can do it for, you know, terms of a month, a year, all that good stuff. So I highly recommend to travel with uh, clear or TSA so that you can get to the front of the line and not have to wait on traffic. Because if you miss a flight, that due to security, that's not fun. So once you, now they're bringing you up to the line, you get through, ready to go through security. Um, the puppies need to be taken. I did forget to mention that. When you do go check in, puppies need to be in the bags. Whenever you go buy your, get your boarding pass, puppies need to be in the bags. And you know, they can't be, unless you have a service animal, they can be on a harness, but puppies need to be in the bags at all times. I would all time, pretty much have the puppy in the bag all time until you finally get through security is what I recommend. Once you get through security, you're gonna, or once you're ready to go through the security, you're gonna have to take them out of the bag. Um, the bag will go through the um, metal, whatever, through security, along with all everything else. Then you'll carry your puppy with you and go through the detector and you know get searched and all that good stuff, just like normal, and go through. Once you get past, you grab your things just like normal, and you're free to go, ready to go, and uh, uh, get on your flight. All is good, right? And uh, little tip tips, once you get through security, we normally have our dogs on a leash, older dogs. If it's just a puppy like this, we'll keep them in the carry-on the whole time. But in the pictures that you'll see, we tend to have them, um, you know, the fr bigger Frenchies we took, we'll have them on a leash. People will wanna come up, pet them. And hopefully there's this one video, I wanna make sure that's on there. There's this kid that had a Snoopy Disney kind of outfit and, and his sister. Hopefully we can share that, kind of them petting the puppies. Um, in this video and uh, for you guys to see, but it's a lot of fun. You get a lot of attention, especially for some Frenchies um, or whatever dog you have. Other th recommendations, for the most part, I guarantee you this is gonna ask, be asked, what about puppies going potty and poop? You know, do they go potty and poop? So I recommend not feeding your, you know, feeding your puppy the night before and not feeding throughout the day um, of the flight. There's a supplement you can get that that we use to kind of get them the energy. Obviously, water is good, um, but you do not want a number two accident on the flight. That's you do not want that. I've never had that. My flight nanny that I use, they never have that. And for the most part, they're not going to in their small container. Now, I'm sorry if this is a lengthy video again, guys, but I think it's super informative, and I hope this helped. Give us a like if it's helping, guys. But I recommend not giving food that morning or making sure the dog has gone number two before it gets to the airport. So yeah, um, there will be places to go potty in the airport. I don't really recommend using those because who knows what kind of dogs, how long the stuff's been around. But if you feel you have to do it, obviously you don't want to mess. And uh, always bring cleaning supplies along. Uh, we have brushes, we have uh, those towels, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that little guy. We have uh, those uh, those little wipes you can pull out of a tube, the, what do you call them? Little wet wipes you can pull out of a tube. I carry those along uh, as I travel. I carry uh, dry shampoo along to do some shampoo, keep it nice and fresh on the dogs. Um, but yeah, right before, I guess where we're at, we're in, you know, we're past security. And now I'd say the last step now is to board the plane. Again, make sure your dog is in the carry-on when you're boarding and the head has to be fully in that carry-on when you're getting onto the plane or else they're not gonna let you pass and lo be loaded in the plane. So that's the only thing, you always show your boarding pass, that's all you gotta do and have the dog in your carry-on and you're 
free to go. Get on the flight. I recommend, again, putting your personal item under the seat first, then the doggy carry on down second, and you're ready to take off and have a safe, successful trip with your puppy and your or your dog. So I hope today's video was helpful, guys. Hopefully there's some videos showing that kind of maybe helped as well. Um, and yeah, whether you have a Frenchie, adult dog, any breed, uh, I hope, yeah, this video on how to travel with a puppy or dog um, on a flight help, guys. So thanks. Give us a like, follow, and we'll see you in our next video.